What's up everyone, Chris Tabron here. Welcome back to the channel, time for another ear break. So, I had a whole video planned today that I was gonna do, but I'm bumping that to next week or maybe the week after. So I was having a conversation with a young engineer today and they were really trying to work on their ear training and basically just their mix skills in general. And the advice that I gave them sort of seemed to resonate in a way that I thought it might be worth sharing with all of you. And then I also, uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Oblique Strategies deck that uh, Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt do. Then I just pulled this one out of the deck. And I figured that sealed the deal. I used to think that this You Are an Engineer one was, was them phoning it in and not really meaning anything. And then in recent years, I think about what an engineer is and I think an engineer is a problem solver. A problem solver within a session, within sounds, but also a problem solver in that they're searching to streamline and improve things. So that said, today I want to talk about more of a challenge to you. Try these things for the next week on your mixes and let me know how they work out. For those of you that are trying to work on your ear training as a mixer or an engineer or just trying to get your mixes to the next level, these things might help. The first thing I want you to try is before you start mixing, play the reference mix down but don't be sitting really close to the DAW or even looking at the screen while you're playing the reference mix down. Just let it go and don't stop it and then just let it play. And just really try to be a listener and then write down some notes about what you'd like to do to the song. These can be shorthand, just bullet point quick ideas, but just write them down. Second thing, and this is a pretty big one I think, turn off the spectrum analyzer on all of your EQ plugins. The ones that you use, we all love Fab Filter, Pro-Q, and the Oxford one that has amazing visual information. But just for a week, just try to turn that off and it's gonna make you use your ears a whole lot more. And to that end, try to use semi-parametric EQs. The ones that have the frequencies already selected like a Neve 1073 or Helios or API. Those frequencies were picked for a reason and find out why. Now the next thing I think you should try, and this may be even before you start EQing, do a pass where you're just getting your levels and your balances correct. Getting those to feel good is gonna be really important. Panning as well, cause that's balance. But do a pass, what we used to call a static pass back in the day when you'd use automation on a console. Do a pass where the levels just feel really good before you start reaching for any plugins. Next, and this is gonna be a tough habit to break for some of you, don't solo for excessive periods of time. Just solo if you're trying to figure out what a sound is or you're trying to fix something really quick, but then come out of solo and make bigger decisions about the sounds in the context of the rest of the song. You don't want the world's best sounding kick drum that has nothing to do with the rest of the song. The next one's gonna take a lot of getting used to if you haven't done it before. But play the song top down and don't stop. Try to work on it as one big piece of music rather than small sections looping the chorus or looping the verse. You wanna be thinking in terms of flow and how one section relates to the next. And it's gonna be hard at first because you might be trying to EQ or correct something on a part that ends before you're able to finish it. Well, if something was bugging you, it's gonna bug you again on the way back around, so just trust that you remember what you were doing. But it's also gonna help you be less precious with your ideas and also keep the bigger picture in mind, which is crucial. Okay, this is one that I still do to this day, and I think you're gonna find it useful. After about 45 minutes or so, bounce the song exactly where it is. It could sound awful, could sound pretty close, but it's gonna capture where your instincts were before you got too familiar with the song. And keep it handy, maybe when you think you're done with the mix, just listen to that 45 minute in progress reference and maybe there was something in your reactions or your instincts that you might find useful. Again, music is about instincts, it's not so much about technical things and you're gonna be doing a lot of technical work. And sometimes in that first initial period before you're overly familiar with the song or before things have become normalized, a lot of the times your instincts can tell you a lot. Okay, here's one that's gonna be counterintuitive, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna help you be more efficient. For every 45 minutes to an hour that you're working, stop for at least five minutes. That means stand up and walk away from the computer. Set a timer on your phone or on your computer or something and just give yourself five minutes, maybe 10, to do something completely different just to step away from it. Now, I wish I could tell you this is a money back guarantee to get your best engineered non-classical Grammy, but that's not the case. The last thing you should do though with all of these is pay attention. Pay attention to, of course, how the mix evolves, but also pay attention to yourself. 
Were there things that were particularly hard habits to break? Were there things that were actually easy that you wanted to start implementing? Were there things that you forgot to do? Like, did you go past the deadline of taking a break? And did you notice that there was some fatigue? Did you find anything useful in taking a snapshot of your mix at about 45 minutes or an hour in? Even if after a week you go back to your routine and you mix the way that you've been mixing, it can be useful information just to take stock of what your habits are and are they habits for a reason or are they habits because they're just sort of residue of the way you used to do things? Kind of reminds me of that story about Kobe Bryant who wanted to get better with his left hand so he just started brushing his teeth and eating his food with his left hand. Sometimes it's good to just step outside of your comfort zone and see what that tells you. So I hope there's something in these suggestions that help you over the next week have a breakthrough in your own ear training. Maybe break out of some old habits or maybe start some new routines. Let me know how it goes.